Good morning and good afternoon to our attendees from all around the world. Thank you for joining this Agile Assets webinar on integrating bridge inspections and maintenance using Agile Assets mobile solutions. My name is Nick Frank. I'm the digital senior digital content producer here at Agile Assets, and I'm going to be your host for today's webinar. Before I turn it over to Scott and Priya, who are going to be leading the webinar, I do have a few housekeeping items that we need to get to. We very much value your time, so our presentation should last between 40 to 45 minutes, leaving us with some time at the end of the webinar to answer any questions you may have. All participants are muted. We have a good number of people attending this webinar, and we want to limit background noise and distractions. If you do have a question, please enter them into the Q&A window on the right-hand side. We will address as many of those as we can at the end. Good news, this webinar is being recorded. We will send a link to the session recording along with the presentation slides within the next week. At the end of the webinar, a short survey will pop up. Please take a quick moment to fill it out so we can continue to improve our webinar process going forward. Now let's get to our speakers. The first is Priya Menon. Priya has 15 years of experience in software engineering, quality assurance, and product management. She worked for 11 years at eBay, where she led the product teams in creating innovative solutions. Now, as the Senior Manager of Product Management at Agile Assets, she works with government agencies and Agile Assets teams to identify agency business needs and defines a product strategy to develop software solutions that maximize usability, quality, and efficiency. Our second speaker today is Scott Schott. Scott is a licensed professional engineer with more than 15 years of experience in government service. For 13 years, he served the Louisiana Department of Transportation, helping advance the agency's payment and bridge management programs. As a technical solutions engineer at Agile Assets, he specializes in demonstrating large scale, complex software solutions to help agencies improve their performance and efficiency. Scott, Priya, take it away. Thank you, Nick. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Um, today, I'll be talking about uh, why we need this sort of integration between um, bridge maintenance and bridges and maintenance, bridge inspections and maintenance, to be more precise. So, bridges and maintenance operations represent, as you know, an enormous part of the resource allocation of transportation agencies. Inspecting, maintaining, and managing bridges is crucial, requiring efforts of many people across many departments. Now, it should be easy for all maintenance and bridge staff to have access to the latest information about bridge work going on. Maintenance shouldn't have to spend time and effort producing a report to inform bridge staff, and bridge staff shouldn't have to ask maintenance for this information. Easy automated access to information between bridge and maintenance is a simple and easy to understand part of the asset management solution we will be showing you today. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the siloed systems as they exist today. We have bridge inspection uh, managed by the bridge inspection department on one side and maintenance crews on the other side. Bridge inspectors are concerned with performing accurate and on-time inspections, then moving on to other bridge inspections. Maintenance is concerned with completing assigned work orders on various asset types and moving on to other work. There is a natural disconnect in information because the two businesses are focused on different things, but they also support one another's operations, and there should be a certain amount of data sharing taking place automatically that doesn't require extra steps to be done. For many agencies, bridge inspectors and other bridge staff may not be aware of what work has been done on a bridge until the next inspection, up to two years later. And this delay can also cause bridge network forecasting and analysis done by bridge management. Without the latest information, analysis could recommend work to bridges that have already had work done and whose condition has improved as a result. So timely information results in improved analysis results. When asset databases share a common platform, data sharing is more efficient and many of the obstacles agencies face with siloed data sets are eliminated. And that's what we plan to show you today. So integrated systems, what can integrated systems 
do to save you time and money? Firstly, we can improve data quality by having the system integrated across one platform. Uh, we consolidate asset and work data onto one platform, which means that users are always looking at the latest information. We streamline data sharing across different departments. This allows for communication quickly across teams. Optimize maintenance operations. This helps to prioritize projects based on real-time data. This, we also help increase efficiency by minimizing the delays of needed repairs because data is always accurate and always up to date. And we also improve bridge network performance by making sure that maintenance activities are performed at the needed times with the latest information. At the end of the day, this means there is a maximizing of asset lifecycle value. And as a bottom line, your agency can save time and money. So now let's go into some of the ways in which structures inspector and maintenance manager can help transportation agencies. Based on feedback from agencies in the field, we estimate structures inspector can provide a 30% time savings in performing inspections. That would mean agencies can be much more efficient and thorough in having their bridge assets inspected. One of the agencies we work with has saved 7,500 hours and $600,000 in one year just on snow removal operations. So extending the use of maintenance manager across all your operations could result in a far more significant savings of both time and money. So the Agile Asset Structures Inspector and Maintenance Manager is targeted to improve efficiency and save money. And to show you more details, I'll hand it over to Scott. Thanks, Priya. Welcome everyone to the webinar. Our asset management solution enables agencies to manage trans transportation assets at different levels, as you see here. So we have the operations level in the middle there where a lot of the field work is done and also at the planning level up at the top. And this is generally where analysis and forecasting uh, is performed and uh, where asset management strategies are developed. So all asset modules sit on a shared foundation, which is shown here at the bottom. And this enables a tremendous amount of data sharing that leads to efficiency, uh, timely reporting, and ease of use. So many of the tedious and inefficient steps uh, many agencies have to go through in getting data from one business area to another are reduced or even eliminated due to the platform approach that you see here. Now today, we're focused at the operations level, specifically on structured inspector and maintenance manager, two business areas that could certainly benefit from uh, improved sharing of information. So information about maintenance requests and work actions can flow to be, be each business area automatically. So before we dig deeper and show the apps, Let's just give a brief overview about each uh, app separately. So a structures inspector has two main components. First is a web application, uh, and this is where inspection managers can assign, schedule, uh, track, and report on bridge inspections, including doing the annual federal submittals for the MBI and the MBE. The uh, second is a companion tablet app. And this is what field inspectors would use to capture bridge inventory and condition information. Now, the benefit of these apps is to increase uh, the efficiency and accuracy of the inspection program, uh, to ensure compliance through on-time inspections and uh, FHWA reporting. Maintenance Manager is very similar in that it also has a main web application and a field tablet app both of which enable agencies to efficiently manage maintenance operations at the office and in the field. Maintenance Manager streamlines complex maintenance operations, allows work crews to get their work done without the data getting messy and improving overall efficiency. So who benefits from an integrated solution like this? Well, certainly the bridge inspection staff involved in field inspections and report reviews maintenance managers and field personnel. And uh, I'll also throw in bridge management because uh, as a former bridge management engineer at a DOT, uh, it would have helped me 
uh, to have current information about the maintenance work being done on all the bridges that I was doing uh, analysis and planning for. Uh, I did not have an automated method of acquiring this information uh, and usually had to request that. So what we're going to show you today is an example of how bridge maintenance information can flow between the two business groups automatically using our integrated solution. Uh, we all know that <laughs> inspections can't be done until after a bridge is constructed. So construction operations are really beyond the scope of this demonstration. So they're outside of the solution space that we're gonna show you today. So we'll run through a brief inspection on our tablet app. We'll see how a work request gets turned into a work order on the maintenance side. Uh, then how that work gets done in the field with our work manager tablet app. And to bring it full circle, how that data is automatically updated throughout the maintenance cycle back on the bridge side. And you can see here the circle. And of course, uh, sometimes bridges are replaced or reconstructed and the cycle would start again with a, a new inspection on a, uh, a newly constructed bridge. And the solution would uh, take over from there. So now I'm gonna switch over to the uh, tablet app and we're gonna start in the inspection space. So this is the main login screen. And after logging into the app, you would see a, uh, a link to download inspections. So there's a screen available, uh, and this is it, where you would download bridges that are assigned to you as a member of an inspection team. And then you can go out into the field where you may or may not have an internet connection. This app is designed to work in default offline mode. So you can perform a complete NBI and element level inspection without the need for a connection. Uh, this app was built with the help from inspection staff at a couple of different DOTs that we work with. Uh, we won't spend too much time in the app, but I do want to give you all a feel for how it works uh, because it is important in getting the, need, uh, the needed data about bridges over to the maintenance side. So um, as you can see, I have some bridges downloaded here already. So I go to the main screen, which has a list of the bridges you need to inspect as a team member and the location of those bridges on the right side map. So upon selecting any of these bridges, this map zooms into that particular location. Uh, there are buttons on the left side for structure details and one to start or continue an inspection. So let's go ahead and with the bridge we have selected on the bottom here, uh, we'll select the details button, which brings up a screen showing all the typical um, inventory information about a selected bridge. Uh, one of the tabs relevant to this presentation is work history. Uh, this work history is stored in the main web application as well as we'll see in a minute. So whenever a bridge is downloaded onto the tablet, that work history information also comes across. So let's get back to the main screen and I'll select the inspect button. And so that opens up a series of main inspection screens. The general tab, which is selected now, can be filled in with um, inspection date. So we'll go ahead and select uh, the inspection date. Uh, the reason for a late inspection, if that is the case. And uh, along with some details about posting and lane closures, et cetera. Uh, skipping down to the inspection log tab, you can fill in weather and uh, arrival, departure information, et cetera. Skipping to the personnel present. Uh, this allows you to add in any personnel uh, not on the assigned team that are present for the inspection. And uh, if this bridge uh, requires any special access needs, there's also a, an access needs screen where um, you can uh, designate any special access equipment that you may need on this tab here. So let's uh, go up to the MBI ratings tab uh, and fill in some ratings. Uh, for each of the MBI items, the deck, superstructure, substructure, channel, um, you have condition rating buttons zero through nine with notes on each uh, of the ratings, uh, and this is to help guide the inspectors as to what the rating uh, should be based on what they're seeing um, out on the field. So let's say this deck is in, um, you know, kind of has a lot of problems, so we'll rate it a five. 
uh, and then we'll switch to superstructure. Uh, let's also go five on that. Substructure, same, and then um, channel, we'll give it a seven. So um, also for each of these NBI uh, ratings, you can add notes uh, as well to support the ratings that you give. So now we'll switch from the NBI to the element level ratings. So up at the top, you can switch to the element level. So all of the elements for this bridge and their quantities came across when I downloaded it. So I can rate each of these elements with a series of sliders, which represent the percentage of an element in each condition state. So let's say uh, I see roughly half of this deck is in condition state one. I can just take the CS1 slider and move it to roughly 50%. The percentage will be right there. And also the uh, actual quantity will be automatically calculated once I do that. So um, let's say the rest of it is in condition state two and a little bit in condition state three. Uh, there is a maximum of 6150 square feet, as you can see, so I won't be able to go past that. And um, that's one of the things that keeps the quality control in, uh, in check for the data that's coming across. So let's take condition state three, for instance. So I want to add a note to that. Um, for each of the condition states, you can see you can add comments or uh, and photos for each of the condition states for things that you're seeing during an inspection. So let's take condition state three. Uh, we'll add a note here. So that one. And then Let's say I also want to add a photo to support uh, the comment on condition state three. I can do this by selecting the add photo button. I'll use the camera here and take a picture of the deck. So if the photo is acceptable, you select use photo. And um, you also have the opportunity to uh, edit the photo with annotations in case you want to point out something specific or add some clarification. So at the bottom here, you see an edit button and I'll just make some little changes. What maybe I want to point out here, um, you can add uh, freehand uh, lines and shapes as well. All this out right here. And I want to color code that red, yellow. All right. There we go. So click save on that photo. And there we go. Uh, just helps inspectors maybe point out something on the photo that they want to uh, highlight. So we'll go ahead and click done on that. And so uh, before we wrap up this inspection, um, you'll notice at the bottom here that the, uh, the uh, app also supports any agency defined elements that you may want to rate as well. So right now we're going to assume that this inspection is completed. Uh, and we are now in range of an internet connection or back at the office. And I'll go ahead and sync the tablet back to the main web app. So at this point, I do want to point out that uh, the typical inspection, um, the process of an inspection is going to proceed from here with generally a QA, QC review of the field inspection for accuracy and completeness. And if needed, uh, some work recommendation will be made for the bridge based on its condition, right? So we don't have time to reflect that entire process here. So uh, what we'll do is um, we'll be fast forward in a bit as we move into the main web application and the rest of the demo will show how the data moves through the system across business areas uh, in real time. So now we're inside the main web app for Structures Inspector, as you can see on the upper left side here. Uh, there are lots of windows in this overall module which support the entire inspection program, from building your inspection teams to scheduling and assigning inspections, and then tracking and reporting on those inspections. Uh, we'll be sticking with this screen here, since it's the most relevant to where we are in the flow of information over to the maintenance side and back. To give you an orientation of the screen, uh, on the upper left pane, we have the list of our bridge inventory. Uh, below that, we have a map which shows the locations of all bridges. And upon selecting uh, any particular bridge, the map uh, will zoom to that location. 
You can also change the base map according to your preference. Uh, select one that's maybe a little more familiar to you guys. And also, uh, if we want to get a maybe a closer look at the bridge, uh, we can zoom in to that as well. You can see it's the one that's highlighted right here. Uh, and since this is a GIS map, uh, it has the associated GIS tool set. So uh, you can do other things like color code the bridges, um, however you see fit. So on the right side, you see a series of tabs that each contain information about the selected bridge. A few tabs of interest would be the certainly the past inspections tab, where you can review past inspection report summaries. Uh, and if you want, you can pull up the um, inspection report uh, for that date as well. Uh, the attachments tab contains a set of inventory and deficiency photos, uh, any sketches or other files associated with this bridge. Uh, and you can also upload more directly using the actions menu uh, if you need to do so. Uh, the tab we wanna focus on for our purposes today is the bridge work tab, which contains the maintenance history for the selected bridge. If there is a yes link in the maintenance history, you can simply click on that and pull up the history. Let's toggle it to the complete list. And uh, you can pull up the history. Uh, and this uh, right here is what will be actually updating today automatically from the maintenance side as Priya goes through the process of performing maintenance work on this bridge in the next part of the demo. So at this point, uh, I will uh, hand it over to Priya so she can continue uh, with the flow of information and start on the maintenance side. Thank you, Scott. Um, here I am again. Hi, everyone. I'm going to share the maintenance screen. So here is the Agile Assets Maintenance Manager. And um, as you saw, Scott just created a, uh, an inspection and out of which a maintenance request has now been created. You'll see on the top of the screen, there's a work request uh, that says deck repair and it's been created today, 323. And now what I'm going to do is actually schedule some work for uh, this work request. So for that, I will go into a screen that says work order sources, work request. Okay, so I'm going to create a work order for the work request that Scott has just created. So I will insert a work order. I will select the project, which is routine maintenance. The asset type is bridges. The activity is deck repair. And I will select the inventory. So I'll select the bridge in question here, which is 10004. Okay, here we are. So we have the work order created and that is associated with this work request. I have to enter a plan amount. So I'm going to say 80 square feet. And I have my asset associated with that work order over here. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. All right, save is successful. Now, I will go ahead and activate this work order so that my maintenance crew can actually view it. So I will click activate work order and save again and save is successful. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, act as the maintenance personnel in the field, uh, switch over to my, my mobile app and view the work order from there. So here I am, I'm going to pick work manager. And this is the screen that comes up with the map and the existing work orders, uh, work orders lifted on, listed on the left side and mapped out on the right side. So in order to pull in the new work order, I'm going to go ahead and click on sync. Okay, so that was synced. Now you'll see that at the top of this list, 
is the work order that we had just created, which is 772510 deck repair and with today's date, which is 323. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And when I click on it, it's going to bring me directly to the location of that specific bridge. Okay. And um, I will, you can also see that the summary of the information is all listed here in the summary screen. Um, it shows me the activity, the asset type, the project, and it also shows me the location. So if I click on the location card, I can also um, show the location where this particular asset is located. And now I clicked on the work order details, which took me to this screen where I can actually edit some of the work order details if needed. I can also add my labor day cards, material day cards, etc., from the screen. So what I will do is I will go ahead and add labor day cards for the folks who are actually going to be working on this. So I clicked on adding labor day card and I see that um, the date is already populated, that uh, the time reporting code is already populated, and I'm going to select the employees who are going to work on this. So I'm going to select one employee, I'm going to save, and I'm going to set the number of hours for this employee. And I hit save, and there's my day card. Now I can also hit material, if I have any material costs or materials that I'm going to be using. Um, I'm going to choose one. I'm going to choose that and save. And similarly, so I have a material day card. Now I'm going to also add equipment. So again, I can select the equipment um, and I can select the operator. And I will set the number of hours and save. And now I have labor equipment and material cards. Now I'm going to also add a cost day card in case I had any direct costs associated and I'm going to say $50 for anything else that I might have um, incurred. Uh, and there's an accomplishment day card that I can also add um, for the number of square feet that I've actually accomplished. And I save. And now we have day cards for the entire work order. So now the work order, the work has been completed in the field. The user has uh, entered all their information, all the day cards that, uh, with all the information about the work that they've just performed. And now we are ready to go ahead and sync this back to the main application. So I'm going to sync. Just like Structures Inspector, this is also a offline app, so it can work, it can, sync when needed, uh, when the user is within Wi-Fi range or within network range, and at other times they can work completely offline. So I'm going to go ahead and sync. All right, and now I will switch back to the maintenance manager on the web application so that you can see the work that's already been completed. So here we are again, back on Maintenance Manager on the web application. Uh, at this point, you can assume that this user is, uh, is a supervisor in the office. And now they go into work orders and view the work orders that are in progress. And right at the top, you'll see the work order that was just worked on, which is 772510 uh, with today's date, plan amount 80 square feet. And there at the bottom, you see the different day cards that were created. There's one for the labor, there's one for the equipment, material, accomplishments. Um, and now we will go ahead and approve these day cards. So as a supervisor, I'm going to approve the different day cards. approving the cost, approving the accomplishment, 
and for the location I'm going to enter the date when the work was actually performed which is today and I go ahead and save it and now the work order is essentially complete the work has been completed and approved and on the inspection side the supervisor can or the inspector can go ahead and view the work that has already been completed right away. So at this point, I'll hand it back to Scott. Okay, thanks Priya. So here we are back in the Structures Inspector main web app screen. And you remember that there was a maintenance history link right here. So we'll go ahead and refresh that to get the latest information here. And once that refreshes, we'll take another look at the maintenance history and we'll see that uh, the latest uh, work order that was uh, completed uh, is indeed part of that history. So, yep, there it is right there. Uh, the date, March 23rd, some deck repair, the amounts, and you can also see the different uh, day cards that are associated with. Uh, with that, so if you just click on something like a labor, you can actually look and see for each uh, day card um, some details about that, if you wanna do that. Um, this um, maintenance history also comes across to the tablet app when it's synced, uh, as we showed you before. So uh, even on the tablet app as a field personnel, you'd be able to see the maintenance history uh, of the bridge as well. So um, that kind of completes the circle. Uh, we started with a, a a bridge inspection out in the field, uh, brought that into the main web app. Uh, there was some work that needed to be done, uh, but once that work request is in maintenance, we moved it through uh, creating the work order, going out and performing that work in the field, uh, syncing it back to the uh, maintenance main web app. And then uh, that entire process, as soon as that work order is activated, uh, it's part of the structures inspector um, bridge work tab as well. So. Uh, that information is automatically coming across uh, to the Structures Inspector side. As you can see here, we're in Structures Inspector. So um, informs the bridge staff as a whole uh, what the latest current work um, has been done and what type of work has been done on uh, each of the bridge, the extent of the work. Hope that was clear and informative for everyone. And now we'll, uh, we'll kind of wrap this up. So once again, there is a significant benefit to an integrated solution uh, in terms of uh, the, the quality of data, uh, the data sharing for sure, uh, optimizing maintenance and inspection information, uh, increasing efficiency as a whole, um, and going on to improve uh, bridge network performance uh, through timely maintenance and increased data sharing. And at this point, we'll go ahead and take some questions. All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending and thank you for the questions that have been coming in. We've been trying to answer them as they come in. And um, let me look at some of those that have been answered already. Um, can the inspection app be used offline? Now, this is something that uh, both the apps that we just demonstrated, the work manager as well as the structures inspector have this capability built in, which is that uh, they can be used completely offline. We understand that our clients, uh, you know, need to take these devices to areas where there may not be network connectivity, so they can uh, take it across um, to any location, gather the data um, on the device, and then when they're within network range, sync it back uh, to the uh, to the you know to the main web application. So that way. Um, that way we make sure that users are capturing data once and that it is uh, actually stored in both locations. Similarly, when the sync happens, the sync that was demonstrated on the, um, on the webinar, um, the data is also downloaded from the web application. So if you had some new work orders created or some new uh, information that was um, entered on the web application, it would be downloaded onto the mobile app as well. So I think that uh, is basically how we um, are able to use the app online or offline. Regarding getting data from into the system, uh, there was a question about manual entry, uh, Excel import, import from IFC models. Um, we do support import of data from different sources. We have APIs, we have web APIs, we have 
um, the ability to get data from CSVs, from ERP systems, uh, from ESRI, ArcGIS, and uh, several other uh, capabilities as well. Hopefully that answers that question. We look further. Yeah, I have one here. If, if work is recently completed and a structure is improved, uh, is there a reinspection needed to update the elements condition? Um, you know, typically bridge inspectors, bridge inspectors are so busy trying to get the required inspections done on time that there really isn't a strong desire to go reinspect bridges that have work done to them. Um, they're going to catch that on the next inspection. Um, it's more on the analysis side where um, in the analysis and forecasting, you can account for the improvement in a bridge's condition uh, based on what type of work was done, maybe add some points to the performance or something like that kind of unofficially um, as part of an analysis scenario so that the um, work doesn't get triggered on that particular bridge. Or you can just, um, if you know that work was done on the bridge, you can exclude it from an analysis scenario. Um, that's a, probably a simpler way to do it. Scott Pri, I've, I've seen this question asked a few times, um, and it's, it's what type of files can you attach uh, to your work orders? So at the moment, there's, um, the system allows you to attach any type of file um, on, the, uh, on various levels, whether it's uh, the work order or in other places. Um, so as long as, the, um, as long as your, app, your system can support it, uh, we do allow the attachment of any sort for the most part, PDFs, Word documents, um, images. And I will primarily say that majority of the attachments tend to be images. Okay, um, got another question here. Are you able to add uh, tunnels as assets and run the NTI tape? Uh, as a matter of fact, we have a current project being done right now that's uh, a tunnel inspection and management program. So uh, just the answer is yes. Uh, and that part of that is running the uh, NTI XML file for the tunnel reporting requirement. Um, there was another question about the sync process. When you sync, does 100% of data upload or does or only the data that has been modified? So we, in order for making it efficient and to make the sync process quicker, we uh, only upload and download data that has actually been modified. So we, uh, we've the the sync process is. Uh, you know, something that we want to make uh, improvements on all the time. At the moment, uh, we make sure that there's only absolutely necessary data is uploaded and downloaded. Um, in the element level inspection, is the slider the only option or can a user input a given percentage in the app calculate it? Well, um, the slider was uh, designed because we want to minimize the, the typing that is done out in the field. It was uh, one of the suggestions we got. So we put the slider in place and it automatically calculates the, um, the amount, but you could type in the amount and then the slider would automatically go to that percentage. So um, yes, the slider is there. Um, and um, that's the way you would get the percentage is just by sliding to that approximate level. There's another question that says, how easily can this be integrated with an existing bridge inspection and maintenance data done with previously developed data entry programs? So um, that's something that you know, a lot of our customers face when they come in with different um, systems from uh, legacy systems. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, there's different formats in which data can be accessed into, into our system. There's uh, web, web APIs, there's, um, you know, we can, upload uh, data using Excel or CSV formats. And we also build integrations with uh, ERPs uh, for, you know, if, if there are live systems like OnBase uh, from where data has to constantly be interfaced with our system. So um, typically our system is, um, is a hub that, you know, works along with multiple other systems. So um, because we, are at the center of the inspections and the maintenance. And you know, so ours is a very operational system, things where data comes in constantly. Um, so um, having this having data needing to be moved in and out is a is a common request. 
Okay, um, I'll take a couple here. Uh, what is the best uh, mobile, I guess, app, um, operating system? We, we do support the main ones. We support um, iPads, uh, Android tablets. I actually have it installed on um, my Android tablet and an iPad. Um, and it also supports Windows, uh, mobile, and I guess their own devices uh, or whatever the latest Windows mobile situation is. Um, so yeah, we, we do support multiple um, mobile operating systems. Uh, there's one more about other types of structures. Um, it's not just uh, related to bridges. Uh, this can, the inspector as a whole, as a, as a web program supports uh, tunnels, noise barriers, retaining walls, large culverts that qualify as bridges. Um, the, uh, the maintenance side would cover the, the culverts that don't qualify as bridges um, and so uh, and, and also signs. So um, our system definitely supports all the different structure types that you would uh, you'd have as your assets. Um, and how do you create elements for structures? Um, if you need to add additional elements or edit those, um, that's done in the main web app. Um, but you can just select the elements and their quantities from the main list uh, on the screen. Like you just add, add if, let's say you have a bridge with a blank, uh, there's nothing in there. You just add an element and select it from the list of, uh, of FHW elements that are available, whether that's, uh, you know, NVEs, um, VMEs, uh, agency defined elements, so on and so forth. So you can basically build the bridge or you can just have it come across from your historical, uh, historical data. Um, you support integration to payroll applications. Uh, that's more on the, I know we've done that on the maintenance side for sure uh, with, with SAP and things like that. So we, I know we do support that integration. Um, you know, that's, that's more on the implementation side and Priya might have some uh, additional comment on that, but I know, um, you know, when I worked at a DOT, that was one of the projects that was going on. Yeah, I do uh, want to um, add a note to that. We do have a few clients who have integrated to external payment systems. Um, so, you know, labor, equipment, costs, all of these. I mean, specifically labor in the case of uh, in the case of payroll, labor is calculated and then integrated with an external system um, so that, you know, uh, it, it links to their timesheets and things like that. So that's, that's definitely something that has, that is very commonly done. Probably got time for Scott and Pree to answer probably about two or three more. Uh, and then we'll, then we'll wrap it up. Okay. Um, does the program allow you to create custom inspection forms for different types of inspections? Yeah. Different, different types of inspections are going to require different information. So um, creating those custom forms is certainly within the, the capability of the software on, on the main web app side. You know, whether those are routine inspections, underwater damage, um, you know, any special inspections, things like that. And also um, one of the benefits to this is that, you know, if you do have a lot of um, inspections that you have contractors doing and not your own um, teams or a combination of your own teams and contractors, um, contractors can have their own logins where they can see only the bridges that they're scheduled to work on. Um, and then you can set up like reports to track their progress on how their, um, with their status of completed versus non-completed versus in progress and things like that. So you can keep track of your contractor and team inspections um, as part of the reporting. Um, I'll take another question that says, can these applications be queried to generate lists of common maintenance items, erosion control, for example? Can work assignments be made to different crews or a contractor? So I would say yes to both of these. Uh, we have extensive reports. Um, the, the, app, the app is also extremely configurable. So uh, even trying to generate the views of you know, what you need to see in a given window can be configured. Um, and when you say, you know, generate lists of common maintenance items, um, definitely there's, you know, very flexible reporting. There's a lot of standard reporting with the app, as well as it's possible to, uh, to create custom reports. And can work assignments be made to different crews or a contractor? So yes, you can define specific crews and when creating work orders, they can be assigned to that specific um, set of people. 
Um, hopefully that answers that question. All right, we got time for one more each, I think. Scott and Priya, if you guys can answer just one more each. Looks like we got time for just about that. Sure, um, I can take one that says, does the system record anyone who may edit an inspection or maintenance request, et cetera? Yes, so the user updated is, uh, is definitely a record, is, is definitely recorded with every transaction. So we, you do know who is the logged in user who has edited an inspection or has created a work order or edited a, a maintenance request, any of that. So we definitely have auditing built into the system. All right. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for our speakers, Scott and Priya. Thank you for the webinar and for answering our questions. I know there's still a lot of open questions out there. Please send them to info at agileassets.com. I did put the email in the webinar chat. So if you have any follow-up questions, anything else that, that you would like Scott, Priya, or someone from the Agile Assets team to answer, don't hesitate to send us an email. Uh, we'd love to answer any questions you may have. Have a good day, everybody. Hopefully we'll, we'll see you at our next webinar.